extremely nervous. Um, so my name is Daniel Sullivan. I'm joined by my good friend Brian Marhan. Um, we're going to talk to you guys a little bit about um, e-democracy, about the current state of civic engagement and, and politics in the U.S. today. Um, and then hopefully Brian's going to talk to you more directly about how this relates to the WordPress environment and how WordPress is really responding and growing to this, this rise in e-democracy and how civic engagement has really become more useful given the WordPress platform. So, um, we started an organization called If I Were President, and just a little bit about the, the organization. Um, it's an online-based platform for the proposal and development of legislation. So it allows people to propose ideas for improving their community, state, or nation, and then really, like Wikipedia, collaborate on the development of those ideas, share them, and begin to gain some clout so that then you can take what you have, have then, has then become a well-defined idea or piece of legislation, you can then present that to your elected officials or the public officials that would be in charge of executing that, that uh, proposal. Um, the mission of the organization is to improve education about the legislative process through active civic engagement and outreach efforts. And right now, uh, we want to discuss how people interact with government and how WordPress can really facilitate the democratic and civic engagement processes. So just to get an idea of kind of where you guys are all coming from, how many people in this room, if you guys can like, just by a show of hands or something, anybody here educators, Harvard education, awesome. Um, government or public officials, not, no, okay. <laughs> um, web developers and designers, obviously that's a big one. Um, any entrepreneurs or business owners, okay. And then um, community activists or organizers is kind of, you know, obviously not a full-time job sometimes. Um, thank you. And then anything else? Um, I know there's probably a wealth of other things that everybody here does as well. So uh, that is very good, and we will try to cater this to make it interesting for you, for you guys. Um, so kind of how people are engaged currently, there's, there's a couple different ways that people are engaged with, with government and the political process, and the, the main form, the easiest form, I guess, would be voting. Um, and when you talk about voting, most people think on the national scale. So um, when we're looking at voter turnouts um, for the presidential elections, you can see over the course of the years, um, in, in the past 10 to 15 years, we've seen a, a dramatic rise in voter turnout, um, up to about 50 to 60 percent of registered voters um, currently. But compared to uh, other countries, this is still actually pretty low compared to most developed nations. And I know this is going to be difficult for you guys to read, but the U.S. is on the bottom. We have um, India in the blue, um, the red one is the UK, and then up at the top is Germany in the orange. Um, so compared to other developed nations, the US is fairly lacking in, in terms of uh, their voter turnout. And then when you look at the more local level and municipal voter um, turnout, the, the results are even lower um, in the 20 to 30 percent range. So we're going to try to investigate you know, why this is and how, how we can sort of improve this, especially using the WordPress platform. Um, another form of civic engagement would be communication with your elected or public officials. So you can do that either through regular mail, um, pick up the phone and call them, or in, in, most recently with the rise of the internet, you get online um, forms of communication, so emails or messages through forums. Um, so if we look at um, some data from the Congressional Management Foundation. Um, the amount of mail, like physical mail, that's sent to Congress, this is just for, for um, Congress on the federal level, um, has remained pretty stagnant over the course of the couple of years, past couple of years. Um, but when you look at, since the Internet was first started used in this medium, um, in 1995 there were 33 million contacts made to Congress. Um, and then in 2004 this jumped to 182 million. So if we kind of project where this is going, we can see that it's, it's a pretty significant rise in the amount that people are trying to reach out to their elected officials. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, that reciprocal process of when you send a message to Congress, then what do you, what do you get in response? When you call them, what is, what is the return process for that? How are they responding to your messages? The, um, and then the third main way that people are engaged in the civic process would be active participation. So either running for office, maybe um, working in government, um, attending an organization or an advocacy group or a town hall meeting or a community meeting. And then when we think about education, you know, how are we getting our news and information about what's going on in the political environment? Um, 
you read the newspaper, watch TV, listen to the radio. Um, how many people in here watch C-SPAN? So we've got a couple. Okay. I was going to play a video, but you guys already all know what it's like. Um, not that many people watch C-SPAN, especially the most of the sessions. There are some interesting ones. Um, then, you got, then you have, um, more recently, the, the rise in internet media, so blogs, um, news websites, forums. Um, that's been a huge rise in that, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Town halls and debates, that's also been a pretty recent, um, a pretty recent rise in, in the um, turnouts for those. Um, and then organizations have been working um, for the past, for however long, on, on grassroots advocacy and campaigning. And then your general word of mouth, um, just talking to your friends and family. Then when we talk about um, who are the players in the political process, um, at the top of the hierarchy you sort of have the elected or the public officials, the ones that are in charge of making these decisions and carrying out the, um, carrying out the processes. And they're really representing your constituency. Then you have your lobbyists, and this is more on a national scale, um, that are pushing for certain regulations or laws. Um, usually for a particular cause or organization that they're, that they're working for. Um, and then also a little bit different from the lobbyists would be the organizations and community groups um, that are representing their organization's mission. And then down at the bottom we have the, uh, the individuals that um, have their feelings, have their, their attitudes and ideas, and these are generally things they're passionate about because they're close to home, they mean a lot to them, and they have a significant impact on their lives. So when we look at that sort of hierarchically, we have a very um, vertical structure where the individuals are at the bottom and they've got to go through all these levels in order to really reach any sort of, um, any, to, to really reach the, the elected officials. So, you know, we can send them letters, we can pick up the phone and call, we can go through organizations and sort of um, advocate and then try to push that through lobbyists. But in order for an individual to really get some policy heard by their elected officials can be pretty difficult. Um, and then that reciprocating process, like we talked about, um, you know, where's the communication coming back from your elected officials once you've reached out to them? So, um, and then another main party in this is, of course, the journalists and media and how they sort of shed light on the issues and, 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 uh, and the events that happen around them. And then a little bit more about the current political landscape. Um, when we think about political parties recently, you can see, um, and this all, this presentation is online, so I'll have the link at the end of it for you guys. And I tried to put the sources on here as well, but if you have questions, please, anytime, just um, let me know. Um, this graph shows, it's from Vote View, it shows the, the polarization within Congress. So you can see from the House and the Senate, since about World War II, the end of World War II, the, the parties have become significantly more polarized. Um, and the result of this is, of course, less collaboration. Um, we're not really finding that middle ground. And, uh, and then the result of that is that um, legislation's not getting passed and things aren't getting done. And we're at the stalemate. So, you know, you can, you can analyze that. And they vote you breaks down a lot of the votes that um, happen within Congress um, by political parties. And there's some interesting graphs that come out of that. So if you're interested, I would definitely recommend in addition to this party polarization, um, we've had over the past about 10 years a, um, a significant decrease in the approval ratings of, of our congressmen. Um, so you can see around 2002 was the peak most recently, around like 75 to 80 percent, and currently we're standing close to single digits. Um, and it's not just something that's within one party, it's within all parties, not just a Democrat or Republican issue. This is, this is an uh, all-encompassing issue. So, so what is government doing to address this issue, to, to try to improve how people are engaged and the approval ratings? Um, so how many people here have attended town halls in their, in their communities or um, debates anytime recently? Okay, this is a pretty, pretty engaged group. Uh, most of the times when you ask people that question, um, People aren't really engaged. They don't really go to their community meetings, either because it's something that happens at a time they can't get to, or it's just inaccessible for other reasons. Um, there's been a lot of improving of the legislature's websites. So Congressional Management Foundation puts out the Golden Mouse Awards that really analyze and break down what the good components of the legislature's website are, and how they really inform their constituents and what sort of things are required in that 
in their website to make it um, educational for their constituency and easy for them to communicate. There's also the uh, the, the open government initiative. Um, so they've done such things as the data, the, the open data um, push. They've done the We the People. Um, so there's a couple different platforms that they've put out there to try to promote this transparency uh, in government. And then there's also uh, tons of local issues or tons of local uh, initiatives that happen within states and municipalities that really try to open up the, their government and try to make it more accessible for their constituents. And then there's a whole wealth of organizations that are working towards these goals as well to try to make this, this platform more accessible for individuals. So America Speaks is an interesting one. Um, after Katrina, when they were doing the rebuilding process, they were having a really difficult time getting the community engaged about how to move forward and what the structure of the government should be. Um, and they tried a couple times to have these community town hall meetings uh, without much success. And then America Speaks came in and they went door to door, knocking on everybody's door, trying to get them to come to these meetings. And eventually, they were able to get 3,500 people to this huge meeting. Um, they did some live polling, um, some really interactive and, and fun things that made sure that they had a representative uh, population there um, so that when they were actually putting forth these proposals that it was agreeable, agreeable to everyone um, in the community and representative of everybody from the, from the city. Um, the Center for Responsive Politics has a number of um, very interesting initiatives. Open Secrets really explains or tries to show where the money is in politics. And MyGov 365 also does this and shows where the bills are in Congress and where the votes are coming from. Another one that um, deals with you know the sort of the money in politics is the follow the money um, campaign, and I won't go into the detail for these guys. You guys can look at them on your own if you are interested. Um, one of the most interesting players in this field has been Sunlight Foundation, and in particular Sunlight Labs. And they've put together a lot of uh, pretty amazing APIs that they've built over the, over the past couple of years. Um, I know they've gone to a couple of hackathons on PyCon and we're able to get people to build scrapers that go through every 50 legislators' websites, or every 50 legislative websites, um, 50 states that pull real-time data about the bills, um, who's sponsoring those, the votes. Um, so not only do we now have this information for on the federal level, but we now have what they have called their Open States Initiative, which shows you the real-time updates from every state legislature. Um, they have the real-time Congress. They have a, an API that allows you to search for your congressman very simply. And then they're working on the transparency data API, which is bringing to light again um, the campaign and lobbying um, information. They also do a number of events um, that really materialize what they're working towards. The transparency camp happened a couple months ago, um, where they're, it's like an unconference where they're, they're using um, people and technology and policy to try to improve how people are, are interacting with government. Uh, the Data Fest, another um, hackathon that happened a couple days, centered around campaign finance. And then the Personal Democracy Forum. Um, there's also, how many of you guys have heard of C Click Fix? Okay, so a couple of people have heard of it. It's a, it's a really interesting um, mobile and web based application that allows people, if you're like walking down the street, to take a picture of a pothole or a street sign or a down tree or something like that and tag where it is geographically. And um, the interesting thing that they've done is now municipalities can, um, it's almost like a service, they can integrate that into their, their system so that when somebody reports that problem, it automatically gets fed into their um, complaint system. So it's registered with you know whatever department would be required to go ahead and fix that or address that problem. So it's a really interesting um, uh, platform. And then Brian will talk a little bit more about sort of the WordPress plugins that, that address some of these um, issues and how they've opened up the um, opened up the doors for more interactive um, democratic. Um. So just a little bit about um, the model that we're working to create and sort of how we envision this is addressing some of these issues. So the individual has uh, a pretty limited ability to really put forth a proposal and gain some support from their community. So what we're trying to do is allow somebody to propose an idea, share it with their community, really get some collaboration so people can work with you on developing it, just like a Wikipedia article. 
Um, and then once you've got a well-defined proposal, you can then take that and begin to advocate it. So now you've got your well-defined issue and solution to that issue, uh, a number of people that then support that initiative. And now, now that has significantly more clout when you bring that to your public officials instead of what the current model is where individuals are sort of attacking it from all different angles. And Brian and I might send our congressman the same letter without knowing that we're both interested and engaged in the same issue and have the same solution. So this platform can really bring us together and now we can, we can present this at the same time with a little bit more influence. In order to, um, in order to uh, carry this out, we tried to create a model that is representative of what actually happens in, in our Congress today. Obviously a little bit simplified so that it's still somewhat um, in, of an educational process and, and, and replicates what's actually happening, but is also still simple enough for the average user or the more disengaged um, or, um, individual to, to follow. So when somebody proposes a, a bill on the website, it starts off as a proposal. And then once you you sort of reach a certain threshold of votes, depending on if it's a local, state, or national issue, once you've reached that threshold and it's above you know 50% um, simple majority um, of support, then it would move to the committee. And then in that committee, you would actually define the key public officials that would be addressing what, what issue or solution you were, you were proposing. And then you would also more clearly define what it is this proposal, it, what, what this proposal is that you're talking about. So when a bill is written in Congress, they have to create the, the um, preamble, which is kind of their, their executive summary, the body, and then the enactment clause. Um, once, it reaches, once it reaches that threshold for the committee, it would then move to the floor, and then on the floor, um, at the end of it, it would get locked, and then move to the president's desk where people could actually sign or veto that bill. So it kind of mimics the, the process that actually happens in Congress. The, the main um, sort of facets of the, the platform and the model are this collaborative online participation. So there's a number of different models and organizations out there that, that have this sort of participatory democracy, but not too many of them have this collaborative feature where we can all work on something together and really begin to grow it. Mostly it's individuals sort of presenting their own ideas. Um, so this online, this online participation in the form of the website where people can edit things together in real time. Um, and this takes into account, we, we've really worked to take into account the, the whole 99-1 internet you know, culture rule of thumb, which states that 90% of the people that access your website are going to be more of the lurkers. They're just going to watch and look at everything. They might not really participate. So in this sense, these individuals might just vote on things, just like the Facebook like. They're going to say up or down. All it requires is clicking a mouse. Uh, for that 9%, those are the ones that are somewhat engaged every once in a while. Um, and for those individuals, each bill has amendments and pros and cons. So those individuals might be interested in suggesting an amendment for something that they've read through. Perhaps they read a bill and, and liked it but wanted to change something. So maybe they'll go ahead and just type out a quick amendment. And then that one percenter is the really the core content contributors. Um, and those individuals would be the ones that are actually writing the proposals, editing them. Those are the experts in the, in the field, so the, the transportation experts or the tax policy experts. So we try to create a way for all of these individuals to really interact with the platform in some meaningful way. Uh, in addition, we have a, a, um, this outreach campaign, a, a grassroots campaigning model. So got these large chalkboards that say if I were president and we've rolled them around the city to different college campuses um, and it's up to get people just engaged in talking about what they would do if they were president, what they would do in their towns, so kind of like if I were mayor, um, you know, if I were president of Northeastern University or Boston University. So there's a bunch of different scales that this can be used on for different communities. And people really enjoy this visual interaction and sort of reading what other people have written. This is really another scene where you can see that 99-1 rule. Um, a lot of people watch, not too many people will write, and not too many people will actually think significantly about what they write. Um, the, other, the third sort of facet of the, the model would be this education component. So Sunlight Foundation has made available all, these, uh, all this data to pull in real-time legislative information for the federal and state level. So we want to integrate that data into the website so the individuals can go and vote on and debate and, and, and read about bills that are actually in front of Congress right now. And this is something that Pop Fox does. 
um, on the federal level. They haven't yet started that on the state level. Um, and Sunlight Foundation was actually looking at their Open Cities initiative, which, as you guys could probably imagine, would be extremely difficult um, for each city to have their, you know, sort of legislative updates. But um, it's in the process, which is encouraging. And then the last facet of it uh, that makes this sort of a unique platform is, is trying to get individuals from all these different levels involved. So not just the individuals, not just the elected officials, but also the organizations and advocacy groups and the community groups that really stand to have something to have something to gain from using this platform. And the, just overall, the goals are to increase civic engagement and education, um, generate some new ideas and proposals for improving our communities, and improve the communication and the feedback with our public officials. So what we once had is a, a previously very vertically um, hierarchical system. We're trying to transition into more of a collaborative, um, horizontal system where everybody's sort of interacting and, and debating, discussing on this on this same platform. So back to um, this original issue of uh, this rise in communication and the attempts to to reach out to our elected officials. Um, sort of what we see is the the value of this is that if we can bring together individuals so that we're not sending as many mass form identical messages. Um, people aren't individually calling their congressmen. If we can come together, discuss these alternatives and these solutions, and then present them as more well-defined, comprehensive um, proposals instead of individually as, as more um, uh, less, less clearly defined, then, then I think that would have significant impact on improving the way that we interact with our elected officials and with the, with the government. So Brian's going to take you through the website, and then we'll um, talk about a couple of key resources towards the end. Hi, how's everyone doing today? Getting through it? Good. Uh, my name is Brian Monahan, and i uh, just give you a little bit of background on how I became involved with WordPress. Uh, I studied business management at Bentley College here, and I went into the corporate world originally and was a marketing executive for Comcast Corporation for several years, and had a mid-20s life crisis, and quit grew a green mohawk, started doing stand-up comedy, and moved to Los Angeles to write screenplays. Uh, so, you know, my parents' hair just grayed instantly. Uh, and so I was, to, to make a living, I learned that this is very difficult to do as, as an aspiring writer. Uh, I started covering and, and critiquing stand-up comedy in Los Angeles. I was approached by a group of, of web developers, they called themselves web designers at that time, uh, who were developing a products and services website for comedians, and they wanted to add an editorial component. So they brought me in to write the copy and to do the, you know, the critique and create some op-ed pieces that would bring traffic to the website and be something engaging that people would be, you know, coming back to the website for. And I sat in a room with two very brilliant WordPress developers for about a year, and I started to realize this didn't look that complicated. And so I started playing with the WordPress. And what I thought originally was just a blog, I realized was this really dynamic way to convey message to people and to organize, to, to sell products. Anything you want to do on the internet, it allows, it takes down that wall where we used to live in a world of webmasters, where they were the masters of your content, where the average person, average you know, a person who wanted to educate people or get their voice heard or run a business, they were beholden to this process. And what WordPress, what's remarkable to me is that it, it has empowered the populace and it has allowed people to be in control of their digital presence. It has allowed them to be in control of their digital commerce and it has allowed them to collaborate with people from around the world. And particularly the open source nature of WordPress has really appealed to me. And so, to let you know kind of where we are, this project, we're, we're in phase two of a, of a three-phase push. This is a, we believe, a very ambitious and, and worthy cause that we've un undertaken. Um, and what we're doing is we're leveraging a lot of other people's open source efforts and being able to build off that and augment that to try and accomplish this, this task. Uh, so we work with 
several WordPress developers, uh, also graphic designers. We have people like Daniel who, who didn't have a, a WordPress background, but who now can go in and, and help manage and, and augment the site. So with that, I'll take you to the website. And one of the things that I find really impressive is you have so many people out there developing WordPress plugins for their own purposes. They have no idea what the, the repurposing of it may be. One of the first things we came into was, okay, so we're going to have user-driven content. This is a smart thing. It makes sense. Because as users develop their own content, that creates search engine optimization. It's going to drive traffic. They're going to then also promote other people to come and interact with the website because they have their content up there. It all, it all made a lot of sense. But so we're trying to figure out how to create this front-end publishing experience. You know, we, we were never comfortable with how the back-end experience is of, of WordPress. So what we ultimately come up with is, is we're leveraging multiple plugins in different arenas uh, of the website. Uh, but the first one that, that we, for the, the publishing of the proposal that, that I really am a fan of and that we've built off of is uh, the WordPress front-end editor. And that is one that we're using for the submittal of the, of the bill. Now, as Dan said, we're kind of mimicking this process of, of a bill in Congress. You have an executive summary of a body. You have the location. So is it national? Is it, is it a state issue or is it city? And so through this, the users can go and they can create their proposal. Now, once that proposal is up, it rotates through, and we're able to allow people to come in and using another plugin that we've, we found and, and tweaked and developed off of is this up, down, up, down plugin, which gives you the ability to vote up or down on this and tracks it. And now, that just alone, as Dan said, so many people that come in and interact with these websites are going to be people that are non-committal. They're not going to want to do a lot. But having someone to be able to, to go and to vote and express their opinion in a simple one-click experience is, is part of the goal here. So we can leverage that 90% and get them active and be able to know which one of these proposals really appeal to a broad spectrum. Because one of the things Daniel talked about before is you have such a divide in the political spectrum these days. That finding common ground shouldn't be this difficult, but it is because of the way that the game of politics is played. And so one of the things that, that drew me to this project was seeing how much we agreed upon and, and what are those things. And maybe that's where we start. So instead of fighting about all the things that we disagree with, let's find those things that we have common ground. Let's move forward on those. And I think that that's how politics used to be done. And, in a more civil time, uh, that people would come together and, and goodwill is built through that. You work on the things you agree on first, and then that allows you to have you know, intelligent compromise on the things that you, you ardently disagree with. Um, now, one of the other uh, aspects that we've developed for this front end editing purpose here. Is uh, I'm just going to pull this up. Is with this WordPress. Let's pause one second here. Okay, here we go. Is creating the front end dashboard experience. So someone can then once they've submitted these proposals. Um, oh, do you know how many posts on there? Okay. Um, you do have the ability to go in and edit each one of these. There's also a hierarchical system. Uh, when the bills move, once it goes to proposal, so as Dan was talking about before, so you submit a proposal. That proposal then gets promoted. The more active it is, the more people that read it, the more people that vote on it, higher prominence it gets in rotation on the website. When that occurs, and once more people have, have gotten in and, and and voted on your website, you get to a point where you can then take it to committee. 
it's gotten it's gotten enough votes that we've determined you should now collaborate with others. So we've created a these groups or organizations that you can then go in and we have a editable process, a collaborative process. So how do we go from this proposal, which is kind of one person's idea. I have an idea, so I'm gonna propose this idea. I'm gonna then get people to vote on it. They're gonna collaborate, tell us whether they like it or not. So then we want to take that to a bill. So when we take this into committee and it goes to a bill, you can then have other people come in and join your group and it'll allow them to edit this bill. get this pulled up. I'm in a different user account here, so apologize for the delay. Um, and he doesn't have the authority to edit this bill because he's, he's not part of it. What we, what we do is we create a process where people can go in and collaborate on this and they're able to change the bill with a Wikipedia history so that we can see the different versions of that bill. And then once it gets mocked out, then it gets put back onto the floor of which we're calling the floors is kind of our main post area. And so once that's done, then people can vote on it. Once it's voted, what we're, our end goal here is to create a form letter from the If I Were Present community that we will then take and send to the elected officials. And what Daniel was talking about before, which is collaborating on or, you know, we all can independently reach out. But when you reach out in mass, in numbers, that's why these organizations have an effect on political figures, is because they see the weight of group thought. So that is, that is the end goal. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and talk a little bit about the Sunlight Labs now. I don't know if anyone, has anyone played with any of the Open Congress or any WP Congress or any of those plugins? Okay, I'm familiar with it really is an amazing thing. They, with the open source initiative for the Obama administration, they have said that all information, all data that is, is generated that's not classified and is open source because it's funded by taxpayer money. So that means that as a citizen, I have, in essence, paid for it. So as a web developer or a WordPress developer, you're able to use this. Now there are some other great advantages from a demographic standpoint, uh, and this can go across all different business arenas, that you are able to use that data to be able to, to look at what areas you have key demographics in, who you might want to market to. So it's, it's something that's definitely worth taking a look at. Um, let go back to here. Um, with this open Congress, the, this plugin that, that they've developed, it allows you to actually, with a, an API code, integrate into the website. Uh, so, in the Open Congress, what this allows us to do is to pull real time data from Congress. So, the bills as they're hitting the floor, what the votes are, who the yeas and nays are for the politicians which way they're voting, and it gives us a sense of what is going on. What we are hoping is that this side-by-side -side approach will allow people, inspire them to create similar legislation or contrary legislation that we can then compare to and send that to those elected officials and let them know where the members and communities that if I were president stand and, and the changes that they would like to see implemented as a community. Um, they also offer this WP Congress plugin that you can, by simply entering in your geographical information, so your zip code and your address, it'll <laughs> pull up all of your elected officials with links to their websites that'll allow you to get in and, and, and interact with those, with those officials. 
Um, another thing that we have, have attempted to do is to get some local officials actually involved in this process. And so we have, we have one who's, gentleman is running for governor's counselor uh, in the 6th district here. And his name is Francis or Chip Flaherty. And so he's been kind enough to, to initiate this and to come in. Our goal is to have them actually create these organizations where they will be responsive and be able to have a direct path of communication from our users to them. Um, one of the things that, that I think is, is fundamental in this is uh, how many people are familiar with the BuddyPress platform or the plugin? Anybody use this? Um, the ability to, out of the box, have a basic social networking website is a very powerful component. So whether you are trying to you know, create a just a blog where you want to have more interaction, uh, but particularly when you're trying to do something of an organizational nature, I don't know about you guys, but every website, when it asks me for my information, I have more than one email address. And I have that email address that I give out to websites that I'm not really certain I want regular contact from. We also live in a digital world where perception isn't necessarily reality. And so you end up with people who I might want to communicate with to organize with, but I don't know if I want to give them my personal information. So the ability to have internal messaging, to have people be able to make connections on the website, be able to communicate with each other and collaborate, and really for us to be able to hold on to that information, allow them to do that through that BuddyPress format is, is a wonderful component that if you haven't played with it, the, the BuddyPress platform is, or, you know, plug-in and, and all the templates that, that come with it and the, uh, uh, all the BuddyPress specific plugins that are out there, it's a great arena to look into. What's that? No question? Yes, yes sir. Uh, who's your targeted audience and what's your business model? Um, yeah, I guess in that sense, here, let me pull up the list. So, um, in terms of the organization, the, the audience that we're reaching out to at first would be the community advocacy groups, the local organizations, for example, um, if you're looking for, I, I, I'm particularly interested in um, bike infrastructure and, and bike and pedestrian safety, so um, for in, in this area, I would reach out to organizations like Mass Bike, uh, the Boston Cyclist Union, and Livable Streets. And in attempt to um, show them the initiatives that I'm interested in working on, um, and sort of gain their collaboration from that in that perspective, um, and it's also a way for those organizations to then say, you know, we've got these initiatives that we'd like to to, to put forth. For example, Mass Bike was at the um, at the State House a few months ago um, with three particular um, issues that they were lobbying towards. So. So for them, it's a way for them to reach a wider audience of people that might be interested in the issues that they're working towards, but just aren't, familiar, aren't aware of them or aren't on their mailing list necessarily. Um, so it's the organizations and the community groups, it's the individual that has an idea about how they want to improve their community, and the elected officials that um, are really looking for a way to get a little bit more um, interaction and response from their constituents. Um, and the business model, would be something that's, um, I guess there's a couple of different ways that the organization, it, as a nonprofit, can generate revenue. Um, the first would be this online um, internal ad system wherein somebody that proposes a bill on the website can actually, like a Google or an eBay ad, put it at the top of a page um, given different search queries. So if I want to advocate for my proposal in, in Boston, I could tag it on the keyword Boston and when somebody filters by it, only Boston proposals, my idea would show up at the top of that page. There's also this with the chalkboarding when we're out in the streets, the traditional grassroots campaigning and fundraising model. Um, and then also um, organizations and elected officials can sponsor contests or almost like a, a call for proposals where 
um, you know, I've got a particular issue I would like to send out to the community and have some people suggest proposals about how to address that particular issue, so different solutions. So it's almost like soliciting um, proposals from the community. Yes? Um, so how connected are you guys to the politicians? Ideally, of course, they'd be checking this and, um, and actually taking the, the bills, but right. have, has there yeah. been... Well, to be honest, this is actually, um, as Brian mentioned, this is the website's still a work in progress. So we haven't actually um, launched it until um, pretty much today. So, in in terms of the um, connection to the elected officials, it's kind of like that chicken before the egg sort of problem of are the elected officials going to pay attention before there's a bunch of individuals, or do you need a bunch of individuals before the elected officials will even pay attention to it? Um, and in that sense, we're actually starting in September. Um, with formal collaboration with Northeastern School of Public Policy and Urban Affairs. They have um, this open classroom series, um, and the one that starts in September is called Campaign 2012 Advice to the President. It's put on by Dean Barry Bluestone, Governor Michael Dukakis, um, participants such as uh, Speaker DeLeo, uh, State Senator Song Cheng Diaz, um, and a few others. And that's going to be, we're using the platform as sort of the discussion board for this group. So every week they have different policy area discussions and classes and speakers about those policy areas. And, and the, the, if I were president of platform, it would really be like that discussion board. So previously they'd use like a wiki or, or Google groups to try to, to try to facilitate that. And hopefully this will be a lot more interactive of a process. Um, and that should also give us some access to the uh, elected officials. Yeah. Do you also plan on engaging like high-level policy analysts? To help with all Certainly. So those would be like what we would call the experts. Yeah. So, for example, I want a trans I want bike lanes on Huntington Avenue, um, but I'm not a transportation engineer. So I suggest a proposal and kind of share with the community. And the hope is that um, you know transportation engineers that live in the area um, would also that also have that issue would be interested in kind of spending some of their time to really hash out how wide they are, how much they cost per mile, things that they would be familiar with that the average individual wouldn't. And then, you know, when you're taking this bill and crafting a bill, when it's in Congress, obviously, um, half of them are lawyers, um, so there's a bunch of legal jargon. Um, but we're not, we're not looking for that, you know, necessarily. We're looking for the, the context. And then when it gets to that point where an elected official would take it, that's when, you know, they would inter integrate all the, you know, with the strike line 15 and replace such and such. So that's, I think we have time for one more thing. else has a question? Probably not. <laughs> Thank you guys very much for, um, this is all our contact information. If you guys want, there's um, business cards and bumper stickers up here as well, yes? Can you read your contact information? On yeah, certainly. Um, Daniel at ifiwerepresident.com. Um, and there's also business cards up here and uh, bumper stickers if you guys would like them. But thank you guys very much for coming.